Next on Access AC Live, we interview the edgy, groundbreaking actor and comedian Margaret Cho. Also, we hang out with award-winning rap artist Young MC, and we hear from Jade Starling from the group Pretty Poison. All that and much more coming up on Access AC Live. Welcome to Access AC Live, the weekly show where we bring you all of the hip and exciting things to see and do in Atlantic City. We have a full lineup of celebrities on tonight's show, including Young MC, Jade Starling, the lead vocalist of the group Pretty Poison, and comedian Greg Morton. Speaking of comedy, we had a chance to interview the critically acclaimed comedian Margaret Cho. She's known for breaking barriers and challenging conventional norms as she tells us all about her new show this Saturday in Atlantic City. Well, I'm sorry I set your house on fire I am a victim of my own desire And I'm sorry I sent you that suicide letter Thank you for coming on. Tell us about coming to the Tropicana and your mother tour. Oh, thank you. I'm excited. I'm in the middle of my tour right now. Um, my show is called Mother and um, it's about a lot of different things. Um, a little bit is about my moan mother, which has been a very popular thing in my performance for a long time. And then also, um, you know, this idea that I'm kind of coming into the age of being a mom, you know, but I'm not actually a mother. But I think that people still relate to me um, as like a mother, you know, I'm kind of a maternal figure no matter what. So um, it's sort of about that and, and about how we can mother the planet. That's really interesting. Talk to me more about that. How do you picture yourself as a mother and helping people? I know you've had a lot growing up and you do a lot and a lot of people look up to you. Can you talk to us about why people would look up to you as a mother figure? I think it really has to do with just talking about feelings and talking about things like bullying and talking about my own experience with like just um, difficulty in life. And I think when you are really open about pain and suffering and, and really kind of can talk to people about it. People sort of look at you as, as, as sort of as somebody that they can come to, to, to relate to, to um, somebody that will understand them. And it, that's very parental. That's interesting. Now, talk to me more about the anti-bullying. I know when you were growing up, I was reading a little bit about you, and that really had a big effect on you. But ultimately, that really helped you grow to where you are today. Yes, and I think it's really important to find time for kids who are going through that. I think that for gays and lesbians, I think it's very hard to grow up. And so if you did make it, if you're an adult, you really owe it to children to go back and try to find time for them and make sure that they're going to be okay. And, and um, you know, I feel like kids bully gay kids because they're really afraid, that, that they're afraid to be different. And it's a very common thing and something that can be very deadly. You became one of the most booked comedians. You were, you're so popular. You were on TV. You were working in television. You had a great show. And then I believe some things happened with the show that you weren't happy with. And that caused, I guess, um, a downtime in your life. And then now you kind of regrouped from that. Do you want to talk to us about that? Well, I was working on television and I, I was told, like, you know, that they were going to develop the show for me. And so I went and, you know, kind of like went and was a part of the first Asian American television show ever. And, and so it was really hard because um, the network were frustrated with me because they thought I was too overweight to play the role of myself. And, and so it was terrible, you know, and, and because of that, I think it, it really had a huge effect on me, you know, in terms of like sort of launching me into really bad eating disorders, into... Um, I wouldn't say alcoholism because that would be like too easy. It's not just like drug abuse or alcoholism. It really is for me a food addiction that is um, about like if I don't get like fed properly, then I'll do weird things with drugs or alcohol because I want to somehow alleviate hunger. So it's a really mm. complicated like level of addiction. It's not just, I think, as simple as... Um, drinking or drugs. And I think when people have eating disorders, 
it's really deadly. It's a really difficult disease, and it's a really harsh one. And and this is really all about self-esteem. It's something that yes. can be cured by that. So um, again, it's something that I've talked about a lot in my work, and and something that I think is really important to discuss. Yeah, and you're definitely a good advocate for that as well. Tell us about Dancing with the Stars. I mean, you kind of bounced back and you were doing that. Was that a great experience for you? Oh, I think it's a really difficult show. Um, no, uh, I, <laughs> I, I didn't have a good time on that. Be I don't honest. think anybody does. I don't think anybody really enjoys it. But at the same time, you know, it can be a very positive thing. I was able to use the experience to, like, wear a gay pride flag dress and address bullying, which is a really important thing and, and to talk about like protecting kids. So that was really, really good for me. But at the same time, it was so hard. Yeah, it is very hard. I can imagine it's very strenuous. It's a hard working schedule, especially when you're doing other things and you have to fly back and forth and kind of put your schedule around it. And there's a lot of pressure to do really well. And of course, you're competing against other popular celebrities, too. So there's a lot of pressures there. But I mean, you did a really great job. And now, hey, look, you're Grammy, you're nominated, right? For yeah, Trade Dependent. Do you want to talk to us about that? Um, it's an album that I made, and um, I made the, uh, it was a comedy music album, but then I made a live version of it, and the live version was also nominated, so the uh, wow. comedy album had uh, two different incarnations, and so they're both nominated. Wow, that's really cool. Um, so tell us about, I mean, I'm so interested to know, some people may say you're very controversial when you're, you know, giving comedy. Have there ever been times where you felt like you went, stepped over the boundaries? I don't think so. I mean, I think it's like you you have to, um, you know, just trust your instincts and no, I like to be very, uh, I, I just try to be compassionate and I think then if you have that, then it, you know, it's all together. Do you have any inspiring stories where someone contacted you and said, thank you so much for doing all that you do. This is how it helped me. Yeah. And, and that happens a lot. And I'm so grateful for that. You know, that's a really beautiful thing to experience. And I know one last thing, I mean, you were talking about, I read it in your bio, and I really, I took this excerpt out, I'm actually just going to read it to you. You said that I seem to be a safe alternative for people who don't think that they're being represented in society. They come because of my point of view, and it satisfies a lot of what needs to be said out there, and that's what makes you really proud. Um, so do you think that that defined you, that sentence? I think so. I mean, I'd like it to, you know, I just want to be there for everyone. Yeah. Well, tell us about coming to Atlantic City. Are you excited to come to the Tropicana? Have you been there before and have you been to Atlantic City before? I have and I'm excited to come back. I, I'm, I'm always making Atlantic City a stop on my tours, so I'm really excited to be back here again. Awesome. And what's a website where we can find out more information? MargaretShow.com. Awesome. So thank you so much for coming on the show, Margaret. Thank you. Make sure to check out more information on Margaret Cho and definitely go to her show at the Tropicana Casino. Don't go anywhere. Our next guest also knows how to fill a room with laughter. We live in a dangerous, uncertain world. Let Greenlee Security Services keep your business safe and secure. Preview. Greenlee Security Services has a history of proven success as a total provider in risk management. Our customer service is unparalleled with 24-hour access, in-house investigators, and security professionals that receive world-class training. Greenlee Security Services develops specialized, cost-effective responses to address the overall security needs of any size business. Visit GreenleeSecurity.com. This segment is sponsored by Greenlee Security, a total provider of risk management. Welcome back to Access AC Live. We're going to keep the laughs going for now with our next guest comedian and entertainer, Greg Morton. He tells us what it takes to make it in the business of comedy and why he likes performing in Atlantic City. So let's check out the interview. We have on our show Greg Morton. He is an amazing comedian. He's so funny. I got to see him on his show this week. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. So tell us about your history as a comedian. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to open an interview. I know. <laughs> Did you tell us? Start from the beginning. Well, you, tell us as about... a small child in the womb, and you were thinking you were doing stand up, right. by, but of course, All you right. were by yourself. <laughs> What were the acoustics like in the womb? Right. No, um, I, I started out, uh, uh, it was, 
And before this, I was a mobile disc jockey. Well, I've had a lot of different careers oh, okay. before this, right. you know. Because right. at first, when I first started, I thought I was going to be a cartoonist. Okay. And I had an art background. But you worked in that field, though. Yes, I did. Okay. But I, I found that I was a lot more extroverted than I actually was. Well, like, you didn't yeah. want to be behind the scenes. You wanted yeah, to be like, ah. Yeah. And the first job that I had was working on the Scooby and Scrappy-Doo show. Oh, you have to give us the impersonation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Then I got into all these, well, this was later, but I got into doing voice work for all these different cartoons and that. Oh, wow. Believe, hey, thank for the flower. <laughs> hey, friend. Like, wow, Scoob. <laughs> so all different kinds of, because I would do, I would put on little shows at the back of the bus. Yeah. Like any time we had a school trip, I'd be at the back of the bus and I'd be like doing different cartoon okay, characters. Okay, that's cool. That's so smart. Yeah. So the, the stand-up thing was kind of a natural transition for me because yeah. I was doing stand-up all throughout my uh school public school and high school career I guess so that's so cool now when you wanted to do voices and even work with Scooby-Doo how did that happen I mean did you say hey let me audition or hey there was a job opening I'll go in there is that was it's that exactly one you how you said it it's like hey I want to audition yeah I want a job wow I said to my agent you know yeah. I did this when I was in college you know I did a lot I voiced over a lot of uh, characters for uh, you know college mm -hmm. projects so I thought you know hey let, let me do this and my first audition was uh, for a show called Hello Kitty, and uh, the character was this dog, and his name was he Grinder, <laughs> and they wanted somebody who sounded like uh, uh, Fred Gwynn. Remember uh, from Car 54? Where are you? Uh, I know that. Yeah. I mean, I watched the show when I was young. Sure. And you remember he'd go like, <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. No? no. <laughs> Boy, am I ever dating say, myself <laughs> here? Like, <laughs> Do you remember that show yeah. on Marconi Radio? Yeah. With the, no. Um, <laughs> And so then I, 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 I kind of flushed out that character, and then right. they said, after a while, after a few shows, they said, hey, Greg, you'd be really good at this. Wow. You'd be good at uh, directing shows as well. Mm -hmm. So then later on, I ended up directing and doing voiceovers wow. for cartoons. I worked on Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, I Police Academy, the cartoon, Hammer Man, that's Super a... Mario Brothers. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Captain N, the Game Master. You and know, that's when they had all... For, uh, you've opened for other celebrities too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I work. I've opened for um, uh, Harry Connick Jr. Harry Connick Jr. Luther. Ve have you got my? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God you're here. Let me prompt you. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. a great thing about Alzheimer's. You're always opening for new people, <laughs> right? right? No, I was. Um, I opened for uh, Luther Vandross at, Mar wow. at at Radio City Music Hall. Wow. I mean, come uh, on. right? Celine Dion. Wow. And now you're working with Bob Kephart at the Comedy Stop here at the Tropicana. Yes. Doing a show here. How has it been working with the Comedy Stop and just the people that attend and being in Atlantic City? Well, I'll tell you something. Bob Kephart is one of the few people in the business who gets it. Yes. You yes. know what I mean? Like, he understands entertainment and how a show should be presented. Uh, he's been doing it for over 30 years, so. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and when he puts three people on, it's not just three comics that he's, mm -hmm. you know, picked up off the boardwalk. You know, they're three professional headliners. Yes. So you're getting an excellent show. Mm -hmm. And then you've seen the showroom. I mean, it's, right. it's gorgeous. It's really cool. You know, basically, we're his kids, and he provides the sandbox <laughs> for us to play in. <laughs> but, you know, but it's a $3 million sandbox. Yeah, exactly. But it's, it's, it's gorgeous. It is like a dream for me mm -hmm. because I'm a real old-fashioned entertainer. You know, my influences are old variety shows like... Uh, uh, yeah, what's that show? Uh, <laughs> don't don't uh, ask me. No, no, <laughs> come on. You've got it on your piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> you know, remember the old shows like the Bill, right. uh, uh, Glenn Campbell show? And uh, you remember uh, Sonny and Cher? Do you remember yes, Sonny and Cher show? Yes, I do show? remember okay. that. Sure. Well, things like that. That's what I, or Carol Burnett show. Carol Burnett, love used her. Used to watch that as a kid. Mm -hmm. And I love those large productions. Yes. And that's what Bob and does. That's, that's why he calls himself producer Bob Kephart yes, because he, really he produces these shows. It's so true. And you could see the synergy between you and the other two comics. It was really great. It wasn't just three people that were there. Right. So exactly. he does a really great job. And he with gets that. it right every time. Yes. Like I've never worked with a bad person there, ever. Right. Right. I agree. So tell us about your comedy skit. It is so. It's well, so I, you know what I find funny is that how you call it a little skit. <laughs> Because everybody does that. It's always the grandmothers and the mom. And when you do your little skit, are you going there to, to Atlantic City to do your little right. skit? Now, do you do it on the boardwalk or in the ocean, or how do you do it right, exactly? Right. I, mean, <laughs> I guess I'm asking your inspiration about the skit. I mean, you do. You have the My Star Wars trilogy. Oh, you uh, do. the internet. I just rip things off of there, and uh, a lot of internet jokes and. Uh, 
Wherever I can steal material, that's where I can. <laughs> no, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. It's from real life. Yeah, that's where it's course. from. Of course, yeah. So you have your real life stuff. So you do impersonations because that's what you're good at. That's some, one of your, I mean, okay. nobody else can do that. You I know what you're asking with Okay. Me. You're asking where was my, in, what was my inspiration? Yes. Before this, I was a mobile <laughs> disc jockey. And I used to do all these different characters in my show. Yeah. Like if there's a Ghostbusters song, I'd have a Ghostbusters outfit. Okay. I think, oh my gosh. What if I combine that yes. with my regular show, you know, and put this, because nobody's ever done that, you right. know, taken stand-up and combined it with a sort of a variety impression thing. Right. So I did all these people, these, the, these artists that I love, Tina Turner, mm -hmm. Prince, Mick Jagger, Michael Jackson, and I put them all in my show. Yeah. And it, now it's like, it's kind of like a, a Vegas or Atlantic City show. It is. It really is. Because like, to your point, I mean, a lot of comedians do impersonations on the microphone, but you actually go the extra step where you put on the wig, you put on the costume, right. you really get into that character and everyone can relate to those characters. They're right. all like idols you know, exactly. in the industry. What can I say? I like to dress up. You like to, and you look good dressing up, I have to I say. I do look I have to say, you know, we had a lot of fun, you know. That was such a great show. What a great show. So what, what, tell us about where we can find more information about you and your upcoming acts. Um, you can go to uh, ComedyStop.com or, um, is that what it is? Uh, I believe it's, yes, it's the ComedyStop.com. Well, it's comedy. Well, whatever. We'll, <laughs> we'll cut that out of me. Yeah. Why are it you is, asking me for it? No, it is comedy All I stop. do is show up on time. Yeah. It, this is <laughs> way too much information. I'll tell you what, though. I can tell the people. Uh, during the wintertime, uh, we have two shows on the Friday and Saturday okay. at 9 and 11.15. Okay. But uh, during the week, it's 9 o'clock. We're open seven days a week. Come out and see us. Yeah. And don't forget us about us. Like, you know, you talk to people out in the line. Oh, yeah, I was there five years ago. Right. We're still here. Yeah, right. We still have the great shows come out and see us of course now how long are you going to be in town for uh i'll be in well by the time people see this i'll already be gone oh no so if i owe anybody money forget it you're not getting it that's okay, how it but goes you'll be back i'm sure oh sure i'll probably be back in the spring so keep your eye open for this show it's an excellent show it is a really fun exciting right show. tell them even my husband laughed, and he's very. I almost monotone. gave your husband a lap dance, but uh, I, I thought <laughs> I thought otherwise. I thought no, I better not because you know he would feel really uncomfortable about it. <laughs> yeah, he and would. And then he would feel the urge to tip me. Right. Well, we did give you a dollar, you know. <laughs> that's right. <I> mean. <laughs> <laughs> and then you almost stepped on it. We're like, hey, that's a dollar on the floor. Don't, I got it later. Yeah, you did. I got it later. I still got it. You still got it. I still got the dollar. Look, here's the dollar. The dollar that you tipped me yeah, with yeah, the other yeah. night. That, there it is, right there. That's so All funny. Right, there you go. Yeah. Well, you deserved it, so. Oh yeah, I'm hanging on to that. That's a souvenir. That. That's uh, that's not going in the snack. <laughs> Please visit accessaclive.com for more information about comic Greg Morton and his upcoming shows. Next, we bust a move with rap artist and entertainer Young MC. Please stay with us. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back. If you weren't in Atlantic City over the weekend, then you missed Marvin Young, a.k.a. Young MC. He's the rap artist behind dance club anthems like Bust a Move and Tone Loke's song Funky Cold Medina. We caught up with him at the Atlantic City Weekly Nightlife Awards and got his thoughts on the rapidly changing music industry. We're broadcasting in the funky and fabulous Boogie Nights nightclub here at the Tropicana Casino. And guess who I'm standing next to? Award-winning musical artist, Young MC. Hi, Winnie. Hey, how are you? Good, how so are you? So thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. What brings you to Atlantic City? Well, I, I have a performance tomorrow night at Boogie Nights, and I'm taking part in the awards for the um, AC Weekly Nightlife Awards tonight, so I'm looking forward to doing it. Yeah, we're looking forward to hearing you. This is so cool. So you're in Atlantic City right now. You're at the Tropicana. How do you like it so far? I mean, it's nice. I mean, it's cold, but the whole eastern seaboard is cold. I'm coming from Arizona, so whatever, <laughs> but but um, but I like it. The pe people are nice, and I'm looking forward to a good time. Yeah, okay, great. Well, we're going to show you a good time here in Atlantic City. Cool. So tell us about hip-hop. I mean, you had this award-winning song, Bust a Move. Everybody mm -hmm. knows it. They play it at every party. Mm -hmm. How do you feel that compares to some of the rap songs today? Well, the problem 
is that there's not as much artist development. There used to be stuff where, where kids would look at the artwork and the liner notes and then want to see the pictures and all that stuff, and all that's going away. They just really want the song and who's the producer and what sample do you use and who's guesting on the song. Right. All this technical stuff behind the scenes, and that kind of takes away from the, the artist being you know, the phenomenon in terms of, of, of uh, the, the, the fans. I mean, people want to be artists. They don't, they don't necessarily want to listen to music as much. So I think that, that, that kind of hurts the possibility of, of songs being as big today because there, there's so much other stuff that goes along with it. There's definitely truth in that, and I think that'll help some other artists who are looking to come up and kind of really take, do the right thing and mm -hmm. kind of come up and make the right paths and not necessarily go towards that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's not about how good the song is. It's really about positioning and, and if you can get it in other kinds of media. There's so many, there's just so many other facets to it than there was when I was coming up. Yeah. Now, tell us about your inspiration growing up. How did you get to where you are today? I mean, I, I stayed in school and music was a hobby until it became lucrative enough where I could get out of school. But by then, I, I had had my, uh, my bachelor's degree in economics from USC. So, wow. yeah, so I had that and I, I knew I had that to fall back on kinda. So the music was always something I would f just ride and ride and ride and the ride you know, has kept on going. I mean, that's a great lesson, I think, for any aspiring artist. A lot of times when you're an artist, whether you're a musician, songwriter, mm -hmm. you know, dancer, whatever, you follow that path, but you don't have something to fall back on. So to have that degree is something very important. Well, yeah, I mean, the irony of it is it's not necessarily the degree itself as much as the experience of going and getting it and also having something else. Because if you're sitting across the, the table from some music executive or somebody like that and they know that you have to get this record or you have to get this deal or you're going to starve, then they'll take advantage of you. But right. if they know that you can do something else, then, you know, they might give you a fair deal. They're more likely to give you a fair deal, especially if you're as, about as educated as they are. I think that's excellent advice, mm -hmm. for sure. Now, you were on some game shows. I know you were on The Weakest Link. <laughs> yeah. And maybe because uh -oh. you had this education, that's why you won, right? A, a little bit. I mean, some of it was guessing. They, I know that my... my uh, I think my Gettysburg address answer was pulled <laughs> out of a, you know, foreign part of my body. But... <laughs> You know, it, it was it was something where I wasn't intimidated by the questions like some of the other people that were on the show with me. So yeah. it was good. Yeah, that's good. And any other experiences that you'd like to talk about and maybe tell some of our viewers some some of your funny stories? Uh, well, I mean, a lot, <laughs> a lot of the funny stories it wouldn't be really good to repeat because <laughs> either they, says that. either they wouldn't be in good taste or I'd be out in somebody that really I don't really need to drop names. But I mean, I've had a, I've had a good ride, but it's been it's been fun. But I've been smart about things. You don't hear crazy stuff about me in the news or anything that's like that. Right. So that's what it is. I mean, I take it for what it is. It's it, I, I'm I feel happy and lucky and blessed to be able to continue to do what I love to do for a living 20 some odd years later. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a, it's a good thing. And I still use my education. I have my own entertainment corporation. Okay. I'm branching out into other things, trying to write some screenplays and getting, you know, songs placed in different kinds of media. So there's a lot of things that I've learned that I could really, you know, make the most of. So, so I was kinda. just going to ask that about your future endeavors and what you're doing now. Do you have any new songs coming out? Or are you really you're going to focus on the back end of that and help other artists? Well, well, I perform some new, some newer material in my shows. So what I try and do is promote promote the new newer material when people come out and see my shows, and then I'll I'll, I'll do some recording. I'll, I'll kind of do some recording when 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 it's warranted. So if I know I have something that's going to be in a video game, in a TV show, in a commercial, then I'll go ahead and make a song for it. Well, what's a website where we can find out more information about you? Well, I have youngmc.com. That's my main website. I'm up on Twitter, official Young MC, and I have a Facebook, Facebook backslash Young MC. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank, thank you guys for having me, definitely. Up next, we talk with Pretty Poison's lead vocalist, Jade Starling, about her upcoming album. Please stay with us. Welcome back. Our next guest, Jade Starling, sang the lead vocals on the 1987 hit, Catch Me, I'm Fallen. She was also in Atlantic City presenting at the Atlantic City Weekly's annual Nightlife Awards Ceremony. Let's find out what her inspiration is and what she's been up to. So now you've been here every year, I see you. You, you support Boogie Nights. Tell us about your affiliation with Boogie Nights, especially here in Atlantic City. Well, we actually just won an award from Boogie Nights in the Hall of Fame, so it's a very 
honorable thing that we've been uh, appreciated so much over the years and uh, actually hosted, I co-hosted this award show a couple years ago, but I'm, I'm very happy to be a presenter tonight so I could just have fun and yeah. enjoy myself. Oh yeah, definitely. And I, I love playing this club. The new location is just amazing. So much bigger and brighter and it's amazing. It really is. Now you're from New Jersey. I am. I'm a Jersey girl. We love that. Now how did you get started in the business? Well, actually, uh, I used to do pageants when I was like five, four, five, six years old. So my parents kind of encouraged me. I got the little showbiz bug and I don't know, it just kind of developed over the years with singing and dancing and acting and all that good stuff. But I really wanted to be a rock star. So I would get like the hairbrush in the mirror and pretend and that's know, what I do around and sing Madonna songs and pretend I was a rock star. But uh, look what happened. Hey, dreams come true. And I have to tell you, I have a new album coming out. Okay. It's called Captive. It's yeah. my Captive. Okay. It's my first solo album. Okay. It's a Euro dance album. It's it's something that's very very current. And it because it is my first solo album, I'm just so thrilled. I'm working with Lee Dagger from the UK. He's half of Bimbo Jones. They've done everybody from Gaga to. I mean, just everybody. So I, I'm so honored to be working with him. So there's a lot of songs. There's like 15 songs. And uh, it's so, just going to be phenomenal. I, I can't wait. It's going to be April, April release. Oh, great. And that's coming out on CD. Uh, what? Is okay. it on CD or on iTunes? Yes, it's going to be on both. Okay, great. Oh, yeah, it'll be everywhere. And it looks like it's going to be distribu distributed by a major label, too. So. That's amazing. Well, Jay, thank you so much. What's a website where we can find out more information? You can check me out at uh, Facebook, Jade Starling, Jade Starling 2. Tweet me at Jade Starling and follow me at my website, jadestarling.com. Captive album coming this year, 2013. Rock on. Boogie Nights Nightclub, Atlantic City, New Jersey. For more information about Jade Starling's upcoming solo album and appearances, please check out our website. Well, that's it for this episode of Access AC Live. As always, I want to thank you for watching our show. Please check out accessaclive.com for web-exclusive videos and stories. Also, we'd love to hear from you, so please write to us in the comments section and tell us what you like to do in Atlantic City. But let's keep it PG-13. You can also follow us on most social media and join in on the conversation. Just search Access AC Live on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next Thursday at 8 p.m. for a whole new show. See you in Atlantic City.